Greetings everyone, I'm Kevin and today I'm going to wrap up my June reading. So if you want to know kind of like the stats, how many books, how many stars, averages and stuff, you can see my stats video up there. But now I'm just going to go through them book by book, what I thought about them and um, stuff like that. I'm going to go through these books in order of when I read them. So the first book I read was When My Name Was Kyoko by Linda Sue Park. I gave this book four stars, absolutely adored this. This story is set in a Japanese occupied Korea. We start off the story in the 1940s and we follow this family that are Koreans living on, as I said, Japanese occupied Korea. So this is while Korea belonged to the Japanese. And this story takes place or starts off where this family are forced as Koreans to take Japanese names. We follow two siblings, Suni, who is, her Japanese name is Kyoko, and we also follow her brother. And we also follow her brother, Taeul, whose Japanese name is Nobuo. And the whole thing is essentially that the emperor got kind of, he placed a law or something like that that said that he is gracefully accepting or letting Koreans take Japanese name names as kind of like honor kind of thing which is just you know it just means you have to if you don't you will either pay fines or get imprisoned or some other like punishment for it so this family is a Korean family living in Japanese occupied Korea following the two siblings and what they individually go through so we're following an older brother and his younger sister and we see kind of what it was like in Korea to be Korean when it was under Japanese rule and in this family we have the two parents the mom can't speak Japanese the other ones like everyone else could speak Japanese there is this uncle who is not married he doesn't have kids or anything and he is kind of working for the resistance kind of like he's working for the Japanese independence and we kind of see what it's like to be Korean when being Korean wasn't a good thing. That even though they are in Korea, you couldn't be Korean and everything Korean was essentially illegal. And there is this, I think like this flower here is the flower of the Korean national tree or national flower and they were illegal. If you had those in your garden, it was illegal. You would suffer punishments for it. And learning Hangul, which is the Korean script, it was also illegal. You weren't allowed to have that. You weren't allowed to speak Korean outside of your home. Like if you're out in public, speak Japanese. You only, you're only supposed to write in Japanese or in kanji. And everything Korean was only to be done at home because that's the only time when no one could really know if you did or not. No one really kept track of that. And this is also like, as I said, it begins in 1940. So we follow also the war, the Second World War and what is taken from the Korean families for the Japanese to help aid them in the military and stuff like that. And this was such a good book. I really, really love this. I gave it four stars for this book. Like what essentially it comes down for, or comes down to for me is we're following this family and we learn about the struggles of being Korean in Korea when Korea wasn't its own, like it wasn't independent, it belonged to someone else or it belonged to another country. And I really love the characters in this. There are just a lot of things in this book that I absolutely loved. This was a very quick read, very easy to get into. It's less than 200 pages long, but I really loved learning about what it was like to be Korean in 
Japanese occupied Korea what they had to go through and I was so frustrated and I was so mad at certain points in this and like I think for me the reason this only got four stars and not five is because it lacked that extra oomph thing I think a big part of that is due to the fact that it's only 200 pages long and also it ends like I understand why why Linda Sue Park decided to end the book where she ended it due to also because of where it started I don't want to spoil anything but like it makes sense but I kind of wish it was more I wish there was more to this story and I understand like that is difficult because it's historical fiction but I I wish we had like another perspective or more I don't know like I I just I just wanted more from the story and that's kind of why it left me with a sense that it's a great book it's amazing but it's not a five-star read, if you understand what I mean. The second book I finished was Daughter of Nari by Renike Amayo. I gave this book three stars. There were a lot of things with this book that I absolutely love. I love the whole, like, the world feels so authentic that it feels, while I was reading this, I felt like I was just, you know, dragged into it with the characters. And I love that even though these twins they lived their separate lives. It was easy to kind of keep track of who was who, even though they were very similar, which I think also was like the point to have them kind of similar. But what they each went through in their individual lives were really interesting. And as I said, like the world building was absolutely fantastic. It is set in the alternate Africa. And I'm saying that because the map is Africa and this is kind of like so because the map is Africa as you see and here is like the kingdoms I am saying that this is an alternate Africa because of that it's not based or inspired by Africa it is an alternate Africa so it's still our world but alternate you know what I mean I hope and we're following Nala and Sinai and as I said like in two different like upbringings, two different parts of the Kingdom of Narai that they are growing up in and they live their entire lives in. And we have this guy called Izzy or Ezzy and he is a bad guy. We're kind of beginning with him in uh, some capacity, I don't want to like say too much, but he He's the one who killed the goddesses, the whole like divine people, I guess. He He's the reason that they're not on earth anymore. He finds out that the, the goddess of life, she had two twin daughters. Or I don't know if he knew that they were, tw they were daughters, but he knew that she had twins. He knows that his place as kind of like the leader of the kingdom will always be threatened as long as these twins are alive. So he and his people, or he just sends his people, around the kingdom, or around the kingdoms, around them, killing every child who looks alike. So if there are two kids and they look almost identical, he kills them because they could be twins and they could therefore be the daughters of Nerai, the daughters of the goddess that he wants dead. And one of these girls, lives relatively close to him which I was very surprised by in the beginning but like I really enjoy where this story went. So then the question is why did it why did it only get three stars? Well I felt like it was dragging for a little bit for like a big chunk of the book. It felt like it was only building up for something. It didn't feel it felt like a prologue in that sense that it was just building up to something and then it happened and then it was over kind of or just building up for the future the next book and stuff like that so it doesn't really feel like this was its own book with its own build up its own thing in that sense it just feels like this was just a setup for the next book the entirety of this book felt like that for me and there were moments in this book that i found a little bit awkward and or like the not moments in the story but the way that it was written that chapters ended in a way that 
felt kind of awkward that suddenly we were just switching POV in moments that were just like, you know, and there were things that were happening that I I like the supporting characters of this a lot. Like I really I really enjoy that. There were just a, a few times in this that I felt like not a lot of things happened. Like it dragged in that way that we were just sitting and we were waiting for something to happen and it didn't happen until like very very at the end of the book so that's the reason i gave this book three stars i am going to read the second book i am excited to read the second book because with all the build up in this one and the ending of this one i feel like i am very intrigued to read the second book because as i said i feel like this book we're just building up and just setting up the second book in the series i don't know how long the series will be, if it will be a trilogy, a five book series, I don't know. But I'm really like intrigued to read the next book. But this only got three books as it is what it is. Yeah, I, if that makes sense, I guess. Third book I read was If I Was Your Girl. I gave this book three stars. And in this book, we're following Amanda and she is moving into, moving in with her father, who she has a hasn't had a very like good relationship with in the past and she moves in with him they live in a small town in texas if i remember correctly and she is a trans woman or a trans girl she is in high school so trans girl and from the first moment she is kind of stepping into this new school she doesn't know anyone and she is seen as the most beautiful the most pretty girl in school and guys are starting to kind of like hit on her and she's very shy and she's very awkward and she's like um she doesn't want to date anyone because she just wants to kind of fly under the radar due to her being trans in this very conservative town and in the school she meets a guy called grant and he is easygoing and nice and he gets her to kind of she feels extremely like comfortable with herself around him and like he makes her feel better he makes her feel good good and stuff like that but she is walking around with this kind of like this big secret that what if he knew that i wasn't born amanda what if he knew that i was born a boy and like all of that like what if he knew that would he stay he she couldn't imagine he would and while we follow her life now in this new school and her finding these new friends and uh, this guy that she's dating and stuff like that we also see glimpses of her past what it was like for her in her old school what it was like for her when she lived with her mom what it was like for her when she had to pretend to be a boy even though she knew she was a girl and her parents reactions to her being trans and the whole thing like this isn't something you can be and her dad's infinite attempts to make her into the boy that he wanted to have or the son that he wanted to have that she couldn't be because she wasn't his son she was his daughter and like we we see all of the, those issues and we kind of follow her in the past of her journey towards becoming the woman that she is and like the whole build up to before the book starts or where she is in this new school when she is fully transitioned medically and she has been on hormone treatments for a while and she is she is in the body of her authentic self that she's gone through all of that and and i think there are a few things in this book that I have issues with. I give this book three stars. I see this book a little bit like escapism in the beginning. In the beginning of the book, it is very much kind of like a dream story for trans people that you can go through transition and then if you go somewhere where people don't know you, you will be the most pretty girl or, or the most handsome guy and people you're attracted to start asking you out because they see you as a very like hot person of that the gender that you are but then with the ending like it didn't really i understand what meredith russo did and wanted to do with the book that it's like 
everyone sees her as a girl in this new place and when they find out that she's not born a girl she's not a cis girl cis is when someone identifies as the gender they were born as if you were born a girl and you identify as a girl you're cis if you were born a boy and you identify as a boy you are cis cis woman and cis man amanda and i are not cis we're both trans and i feel like as a trans person it felt a little bit like that to me at least that i I like the fact that she, that people just saw her for who she was. But then the ending of the book, I get it, but I'm not happy with it. Like, I think the whole thing with Amanda in this book, I get it. Like, there are a lot of things in it that I identify with as a trans person. But the book itself, I don't like it. Like, I gave it three stars, which I feel like it's... There is no way for me to give this more than three stars. And I understand if people do like this book. Like, I understand if people want to go into a book about a trans person written by a trans person. But for me, this book, it was it just, it wasn't written for me, I guess. It's not for me. I think that's kind of what it boils down to. Just this wasn't for me. The next book that I read is The Notebook. And I gave this book three stars. There were a lot of things. Like, I read this book because of Yeti BRC. I got a punishment prompt for a book that was turned into a hated movie. And I picked The Notebook because I hate the movie. I used to love the movie. Like, the first time I watched the movie, I really enjoyed it. Then, after that, when I got a little bit older I realized like this book is this movie is toxic and what I had in mind was the kind of Tivoli scene well you go me what no 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 hey Pat she just told you why not I don't know because I don't want to Ella. all right well you leave me no other choice then oh my god <laughs> Do it. Oh, it's the I'm gonna ask you one more time. Will you? Or will you not go out with me? That is extremely, you know, abusive and toxic and stuff. Like, someone is basically threatening to kill themselves if you don't go out with them is abusive. And that was in the movie. From what I like, from what I took away from the book, is it didn't happen in the book. Because I never noticed that happening in the book. Like, in the book, it was very much more, like, to the point that they were, they got off on the right foot immediately and started talking and all of that was kind of, like, talk told in passing in the book. Everything was, like, telling and not showing. Like, everything was, like, this is what happened and da 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 and not so much active like everything was just it just felt like it was being retold which i think makes sense because the book is essentially a notebook a diary that this guy has and he is using this notebook to retell his love story to his wife as she is struggling with alzheimer's she is losing a lot of her memories and she doesn't remember who he is and so for him to kind of remind his wife of their love story he has this notebook and he is retelling their love their love story so i get why the book was written the way it was but it was just like it wasn't exciting for me to read this book because it just felt like like okay everything was just being retold it didn't really feel like a lot of things were happening and everything that felt, oh, this could have been very interesting uh, or intriguing. It was told in a way that was like, this happened and this happened. There was no real in intrigue in that. And like with romance novels, you know that they're going to ha end with like the couple being together. And like this book is a romance novel in that sense, like it did end with them being together. But there was nothing in the book 
because in the beginning you knew that they had kids and that they were married for a very long time. So you were just like, yeah, this woman is going to leave her fiance for Noah. Like you knew that. It wasn't like in other books, like you wouldn't know, like maybe there are some stories, you know, where a woman is has her first love where one person has a first love but is engaged to someone else and they marry this person and then when that person dies they reconnect with their first love and then they're together but you knew that that wouldn't happen you knew that she had to leave her fiance because she's been married to this guy who is the narrator of the book for a very long time and they have adult kids and grandkids so like you knew that so it wasn't really intriguing in that way like you didn't think like oh what is going to happen what is going to happen like you knew what, what, what was going to happen and the way that it was told was just boring to me like this is not a story for me this like the writing in this book wasn't for me it's not the kind of romance novel that i like that i enjoy and the writing i did not vibe with so i don't think i'm going to pick up another nicholas sparks book like this was just i just i didn't like it it was like meh so i gave it three stars the next book i read was running with lions i gave this book three stars too this is a story about like a soccer team and it starts off with like Sebastian who we're following. He goes to the su a summer soccer camp with like all his teammates and they're kind of like training for the coming soccer season and things like that. And he has like an old best friend who is a British guy called Amir shows up at this camp and Sebastian's like oh my god my childhood bestie is here like what am I supposed to feel about this and everyone hates Amir and Amir seems to hate everyone there are just a lot of things with this that I find were like okay sure this is cute I should also say like this is a male male romance Sebastian is bisexual and Amir is gay and Amir sucks at soccer. So Sebastian being the person that people in the soccer team thinks is going to make captain, which you'll find out, but he is also like the, um, the goalie, the team's goalie. And he says out like, okay, fine. I'm going to help Amir become the best he can be. Amir actually becomes a decent or good defending soccer player. He just doesn't really have good eye ball foot coordination, not very good with like the ball play with his feet. So he gets a lot of help from Sebastian and the two starts to form not really a friendship, but they start hooking up and they start learning more about each other, getting to know each other and finding out like what happened in the past and made them stop being friends and a lot of things like that. The reason I did not like this book, I mean, I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. It's not like I hated it. I gave it one star. But the reason I didn't give this more than a three star was because the whole like this, that the love story between Amir and Sebastian felt rushed and I didn't really feel like it was well established i thought the ending was very very cute there were a lot of things like in this book that i felt was either went too fast or too slow and everything just felt like it, it the, the pacing was just all over the place like either it was like really really slow nothing happened or it went too fast and then there was this moment like in the end where Sebastian is like, well, this thing that I've had a problem with for a very long time is over because of da 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 da. So like something that we the readers were told like this is a big deal for Sebastian. This is very like a, a big problem for Sebastian. Well, it's fine because off the page, he worked through it. Like it felt like at points it was just telling not showing it was just like this happened instead of showing us what happened how it happened and you know things like that 
and that just kind of like frustrated me and there was just all this build up towards a soccer game that didn't happen until like the last the absolute end of the book and I feel like this I I wouldn't categorize this as a sports romance I would consider it more of like it, a YA sports romance I would consider this just a YA romance that contained sports the sports part of this wasn't big enough for it to be a, a part of the genre it was just like it it wasn't, you know, it wasn't enough. It's like I wouldn't consider a book to be like an academic romance if it's just like people doing like st studying for this whole big thing that is going to come that is actual academia. Like that's, it's not the same in my opinion. And for a book to be a sports romance, it has to have more than one game at the absolute end of the book, in my opinion. It was just a little bit too all over the place for me. So that's why I gave it three stars. The next book I read was Katitsi by Katalina Taikon. Katitsi is a children's novel about a Romani girl. The book starts off at this orphanage where Katitsi lives. She has her friends there and she finds out that she's Romani. What I really love with Katitsi and the reason I gave it five stars is because it was just, you know, very important and the way that it captured the, the issues that the Romani faced from a Romani perspective was really important. And like, and this was just like a children's novel of, about this girl and all the adventures she's go she goes on being Romani and everything that she and her sisters and her parents her family goes through as Romani and what they have to do and in things like that it's very very interesting and very important as I said and this is kind of like a fictional memoir like this all of the stories are based on Katarina Taikon's own life Katitsi is Romanesh for small Kati, Katarina Kati, Katitsi. And like this was just very, it was just such a fun read and a very like fun experience to read. And after like immediately after finishing this book, I looked into the history of the Romani in Sweden, the history of the Sami in Sweden, and the history of the Finnish Swedes in Sweden. Like, they are free of our national minority groups. We also have the Mienkiel and the Jewish. But those three are the ones that I don't know that much about. And I started kind of like looking into it more. And I actually sat that day after I finished Katitsi, I wrote... I started like a Google Docs and I just filled it out with a curriculum for Swedish class for like the upcoming term so that I could just like have like a big curriculum only about our minority groups. Like I also went into like this whole thing with the Romani as like the Katitsu book and I was just like how can I use this book in education and I went into like a whole thing and this book was so inspiring to me as a teacher so for that reason i gave this book five stars i did really enjoy it i do understand that not a book for everyone it is an old book it is historical and it is a children's novel so it's not for everyone but this has a lot of like educational value and i really enjoyed this and i started looking at like can i buy this book because this is a book that I feel like I would love to own. Unfortunately, I think the newer editions of this book has ugly covers. Just want to put that out there. That's the only reason I haven't bought them. 